This video is brought to you by Azam Sharp School, which is one of the biggest producers of iOS development videos. I mean, just check out this. 16 courses, more than 90 hours of videos, more than 90 hours of content, and it just keeps on increasing. So by the time you're watching these, it might be like 20 courses with 120 hours, all right? And now on Azam Sharp School, I do offer the annual membership, which is $249, and monthly membership, $25 a month. And what's great about these membership options is that once you sign up for these memberships, you can access to all 16 courses. And check out these amazing courses. test driven Development in iOS, Reactive Programming, Combined, Swift Vapor, Server-Driven UI, Reality Kit, Swift Data Bootcamp. I mean, it just contains all the things that you need to become an amazing iOS developer, and I keep on adding more courses. So there are more courses that will be added later on. So this is an amazing deal. You can check out the testimonials from our existing students. And this is again, one of the largest catalog for iOS development courses. So sign up for either a monthly membership or annual membership and enjoy all of these courses. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. Now let's go ahead and talk about what exactly is concurrency. And if our application does not have concurrency, what kind of effects we will encounter. The simplest definition of concurrency is trying to do multiple things at the same exact time. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Let's say that we are running our application on our main or our UI thread. We are performing some sort of UI events like scrolling or maybe even clicking a button. Then on the main thread, we try to download some images. What do you think is going to happen at that point? Well, our application will completely freeze because the main thread is a sequential thread, meaning that whatever events comes as a sequence, as a serial queue, it gets executed. But now you have blocked the entire main thread by downloading images on it. So while the images are being downloaded, your user interface is completely frozen. You cannot scroll, you cannot click a button, you cannot do anything. Once the images have been downloaded, then you can go ahead and resume your UI. Now, let's go ahead and see that how that actually works in action. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code of what will happen if we try to download an image or a resource on the main thread. You can see that this is a Swift UI application, but the same is true for UI kit also. We have a button that is calling the function download image. Once you call download image, it gets the URL and performs a download. Great. Let's go ahead and see what happens. If I go ahead and run the application, I can see this list. The list doesn't really have anything to do with anything. It's just there, so I can interact with it. As I click on the download image, now everything is stuck. See that? Let me go ahead and click on the download image again, and you will see that I will not be able to interact with my UI. No. Now it moves. After the download is completed, now it's moving but now I cannot move it. This is a very bad user experience. And the reason for that is that when we called download image, we were calling it from the main thread. And we were still on the main thread when we were trying to download our image. This means that one and only one thing can happen on the main thread because this is a serial queue. And the only thing that was happening on the main thread was the part of downloading the image. So it cannot really interact with our events, like touch events, scroll events, and whatnot. So now let's go ahead and see how we can fix this problem. So this is not really a good way to download images or performing any kind of uh, intensive operation. You should make sure that your main thread or your UI thread is nice and clean. So how can we improve this? We will not download any images or perform resource intensive operation on the main queue. The main queue will be used for UI events 
and events that can happen really quickly. In order to download our images or any other resource, we will use help from the background thread. The background thread will be responsible for downloading all the images. This means that our UI will be nice and smooth and it will not be frozen when you are performing any downloadable task. This is also the correct way of doing things. Let's go ahead and see this in action. So looking at this code, we can see that we are actually performing the download on this particular line, where we use the data structure and contents of, and we pass in the image URL. This is the point of contention. This is where we have to move it to a separate thread. We can use the dispatch queue dot global dot async and perform our any task on the background. There we go. Now, once the data has been fetched, we will still have to move to the foreground or the UI thread to update the UI. So let's just say that we have downloaded the data. And now we need to notify the UI and give the data to the UI. We will have to switch our queues to be on the main thread, which means dispatch queue.main.async. And this is where we will update the UI. The UI update should always be done on the main thread or the UI thread. So inside over here, since you were in the background thread, once you download the data, you can switch to the main thread or the UI thread and then perform the actual update. Let's go ahead and run the application and see what effect does it create. We still have a list. Now when I click on anything, you can see that it, it removes or it pretty much gives us instant answer. It's not really frozen. We're not waiting for anything and it's nice and smooth. In the background, it is trying to download the image. We're not using the image, that's a different story, but at least you can see that how our UI is now nice and completely free of everything. So this is concurrency in action. Making, doing things, multiple things at the same time. Now let's go ahead and see and learn a little bit more about how concurrency is handled in Swift by using dispatch queues. Let's talk a little bit about Grand Central Dispatch, also known as GCD. We already learned that all the stuff that happens on our user interface is part of the main thread. This is also known as the UI thread. This UI thread is a serial queue. That means that when the event comes in that order, it is processed. You can also think of it as first in, first out. The first event that comes to the queue gets processed first. You have to make sure that your UI thread is nice and clean and there's no crazy downloading going on of resources on your main thread or it will freeze the entire application as you have experienced in the last lecture. The other th kind of queue that you can create is a global queue, which can run concurrently. Global queue can have different priority settings like user interactive. This is a quality of service for user interactive, which means that such as animations, event handling, or updating your app's user interface. It can also be user initiated. This means that this kind of a quality of service for tasks prevent the user from actively using your app. The default is preferred, which means the quality of service class is default, which means that it's going to take a decision on your behalf in selecting the default or whatever kind of a quality of service for the priority. The utility quality of service or priority if for tasks that the user does not track actively. The background is for maintaining tasks. You, if you want to do something in the background, meaning you might be updating something in the background and clean up kind of a task. And unspecified, which means there is no quality of service or priority setting that you have defined. Now, creating a serial queue 
using Swift language is actually pretty straightforward. You simply create a dispatch queue. You provide a custom label, which in this case is serial queue, and you execute the task using queue.async. The task that is the first one in line gets executed first, and when that task finishes, then the second task is executed. On the other hand, if you are creating a concurrent queue, you must specify in the attributes of the dispatch queue that you are creating a concurrent queue. In a concurrent queue, the queue.async, the first task is executed first, but there is no guarantee that which task will come back in the result first. It can be the second one, it can be the third one, it can be the first one. So although the task will start in that order that they are added, but they can finish in any order, hence concurrent. Whenever we are working with a background queue, it can be used to download images and resources that we don't really want to do on the main thread, on the UI thread. Because if we do it on the main thread, it will block and freeze the user interface. But one of the main problems with the code that you're looking at is we are currently in the main thread. We download the image. We're currently in the background thread and we download the image, but we are still in the background thread when we are trying to refresh the user interface. This is not a good idea. If you want to refresh the user interface or do anything with the user interface, you have to make sure that you are in the main thread. This means that you can download the image in the global background thread, but if you want to update your user interface, you need to make sure that you're switching to the main thread or the UI thread. This is done by dispatchq.main.async. And this is going to make sure that your UI is fast and the thing that you're trying to update on the UI is being updated from the main thread and not the global background thread. So that is a crash course on GCD. This course is mostly about async and await and actors and the new features of the Swift language. So let's go ahead and start using the new features now.